Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here again. I'm talking to you quite frequently now. And uh, some of you might, if you're receiving a, a lot of my posts, might think I might, I'm talking too much, that I'm too out here on the front. But when I hear something, uh, see something that really affects you, and many of you don't have the time to contemplate these matters, many of you don't have time to even think about these things. You just go by hoping that everything falls all right, and also hoping that there are those out here who care enough about one another to look after one another to a certain degree that we don't have too much to worry about. And yet, with people picking up cars and cranking them up, driving over people down sidewalks and things like this, we really can't say that there is a time we don't have to worry. But I, there is a time that we can fix and design ourselves that can eliminate the worry. And this is what keeps me coming back to you every day because it seems that we just can't catch it. We can't get this. You know, ladies and gentlemen, let me share something with you that might be common amongst us that you might be able to identify with. My mother was pretty young when I was born. So I was really raised by my great-grandmother. My grandmother, my mother's mother, had about 12 children, and she was a, they were all aged and they're connecting, so my grandmother couldn't raise me. But her mother could. Her, her, my grandmother, as I said, had 12 kids. My mother had 12. My great-grandmother had nine. Some of them were educated and some of them weren't. Some of them went into the military, some of them went into the education system as far as being professors and music teachers. But I was raised on a farm. I was raised by their parents. I was raised on a farm, a farm with hogs and uh, cows and dogs and green grass blowing across the fields. I didn't know anything about racism and hatred. I didn't know anything about that. I grew so separated from society that the people that we mingled with were people who lived down the road somewhere, or relative, and you'd be so glad when you got in the company of people, you just laugh and talk and have fun, and worries and stuff like this. What was that? You know, you didn't have radio, uh, television, so you just talked about what's been happening since the last time I saw you, and life seemed to have been good. Started going to school, got a little bit closer to other people, and sharing, but life was still good. Life was good. We uh, go to movies every now and then, maybe once a year. But to bring it up closer, bring it speed up, television came around. And uh, watching television, <clears throat> I guess we all know how television affects our lives now. But watching television, we've seen a lot of Western. And it knew a lot of times it was about the soldiers, the Union soldiers, and every now and then we had the war between the states, but we didn't know what that was about, so I don't, I don't really know. We saw a war between the states. But we did see the Union soldiers fighting Indians. <clears throat> and I, I'm assuming that other black folks were just like me, because when I saw this happening, I didn't know it was wrong to take people's land. My government, which I didn't know what government was at that time, but I felt that it was I was a part of it, were taking other folks' land. And I saw that as being necessary so that we could have a place to live. Like, in order to have a place to live, you had to take it. It wasn't just there for you. <clears throat> so I grew up to a certain period in my life thinking that that was all right. And then somewhere down the line, we started talking about Blackness. It was a long time down the line, too. People started talking about civil rights and started bringing black people to the awareness that, hey, we weren't free. I mean, we were being oppressed just like other folks that we had heard of being oppressed. And we had gone to church and grew up in a church. I never heard anybody in the church telling us that we were oppressed, that God had something special for us. I mean, we were so trapped down in that ignorance. I'm talking about me, and I'm saying I was. So I'm thinking most of us, because we acted the same way. Me, I used to look at the people who went to church and saw them ignoring all, as I grew up, saw them ignoring things that was happening around us, and I started thinking they didn't know anything about God, They, but I didn't know why. 
I didn't know that they were taught, the preachers were taught to preach by the white preachers, by the oppressors. I didn't know that. But anyway, we went all through that. But I did believe, ladies and gentlemen, as I grew up and saw Dr. King teach us that God was real. You heard what I said? I said Dr. King taught us. Rosa Parks was the first one. Well, when I say, I'm not saying she was the first human being, but I'm saying as far as I understand an association with society at that time. For me, Rosa Parks was the first one who expressed that God lived in her. When she stayed on that seat and wasn't getting up. I'm sure there were other people who went through the same thing. I don't know what happened to that situation. But that situation with Rosa Parks was the evidence that God was real. And then God spread it out from that to touch the other people. Even led up to Dr. King. And used those people. And all those people who were in that struggle, all those people that were stood before those dogs and were on fire hoses and beat with sticks and baseball bats, God was in all of those people, allowing them to stand the test of evil, allowing them to stand the test of Satan, the test of devil, the test of the anti God, allowed them to do it, withstand it all, to bring about the necessary changes. No magic. No God waving a wand down here straightening it up. Because when we came into the world, we were as innocent as could possibly be. And we were innocent for a while. It took us a while to learn that crap they were teaching us, that they have taught us. But it's taught. And so we learned it. We want things to get better. We got to unlearn it because we weren't born this way. So we can stop talking about God coming and saving us. Why would he do that? It didn't make any sense. You, do you want to be saved? If you want to be saved, show it by saving yourself. At least doing the best that you humanly can. And all that you can't do, then put that in God's hand. But don't let you try to put something in God's hand. You haven't done what your part is. But that's what we want. We've been taught to want God. See, evil perpetuates itself through individuals all over the world. Through individuals. And evil, at one of the first things it taught us when we began to step out of innocence is that God was his. And over in America, God was white. Now, I don't know in other parts of the world. I'm sure God was a Chinese over there and God was an African over there. And God abused people. Everywhere God was in the man, he was abusing people because he was fake, because he was phony. And so, as I look at this thing, I still believe that we could change. I grew up wanting peace and prosperity and joy. I wanted the things that brought me uh, excitement in my life. I thought everybody else did too. I first thought that the system that we lived under, it was possible to happen. Then I see people giving everything they got, trying to be successful. Teachers who want to be smart. Guys are smart. Girls are smart. And then they never get rich. Some doctors do. Because they know they got something that you want. You want to live. And so they can put any kind of price on you. And if you got the money, you'll pay it. You know how that thing goes. So what they did, they made money. Now I'm going way back now. Made money, God. Well, they didn't really make it God. <clears throat> to them, it was a tool to be used to draw the people into their own bondage, into the bondage of the people who were controlling the money. But the people didn't see the people behind the curtain. So mo money became the God. Money became the thing that allowed you to eat. Money became the thing that would allow you to have clothes. Money became the thing that would allow you to have shelter. Money became the thing that determined whether you had education or not. Money became the thing. To determine whether you got health care. And color became the thing whether you got it or whether you were barred out. Can you believe that? Because when those got were black who got money, they still were black. Oh, they wanted that money out of your hand, but they weren't changing the way they treated you if you were black. And that's still evidence today in this whole society, even after Dr. King has died, you still got Haters. You know, they say the evil one, he walking back and forth over the earth to see who can destroy. 
destroy, killing, tearing down. That's what this racism, all that stuff was designed to keep us divided because there were some people who believed in going good. There were some people who just believed that being true to one another was okay. But there was another who didn't. And so that philosophy started. And it's perpetuated now. That's what it happened in Barcelona last night, <coughs> uh, in the United States the other night. And it's happening different places in the world every night. 